place. I've, I've found a place, you know, the, the tickets, the competition on the radio. Oh, brilliant. It still stinks of fish. Right, next time we get to sort the whole day, not just the afternoon fish when the fishermen sold out. Oh, it's all slimy down there. Oh, look, it's all chopped off heads. Definitely next week we do the morning as well. That's it, we make enough to meet next week's rent. Think positive, my friend. Today we're going to break all the records. We're going to smash every single sales target in sight. What's sales target anyway? Well, we're bound to get rid of at least one. Even we have to give it away, innit? Great. All right, be busy, have you? Bit of a smile would nerd, would it? Who is he? I think you had a little bumper. Right, thanks, Seb. Now, look, any complaints, come back and tell us. That's what we, we don't know about. We can't put right for me. All right? So, uh... Hiya, Mark! Oh, what is that? Hey, don't buy anything from him. He's a miserable old boot. I didn't know you had a saw on here. It's our first day. Don't want to buy a kiddies party pack, do you? Oh, that's cheating asking you, mate. <laughs> Have you not sold any? Well, believe it or not, we have. One woman's bought three of the jumbo packs. That's enough for 72 kids. Oh, just want to do me, I think. Yeah, but it's been really slow since then. I could sell you a standard pack, and you can have an individual party with him six times. Well, I would, but I don't think Patricia would approve. I think she'd prefer the Harrods equivalent. Right, snobs. Back from the holidays then, are they? No, not well next week. I'd have been looking forward to a few more days on my own if I hadn't been for this stupid teapot. I went all around Ultimate Weekend looking for a new one. What cheap was that? Oh, it was one of their precious ones, only it got broken while I was looking after the house. Well, she can't blame you for that, surely. I had some lads around. Margaret Douglas! It was all a misunderstanding. <laughs> while the cat's away. Mm, where my luck's going, if they had a cat, it'd be dead by now. <laughs> I mean, all this extra time off I'm meant to have, and I've got to spend it looking for an identical teapot. Uh, what do you want another broken one for? Ah, uh -huh, really uh, funny. I'll have to go anywhere. I've not tried all the pottery stores on here. All I'll right, see ya. see ya. I've got some super glue to home if you're desperate. Tried it. Tea. Oh, great. Sold them all. Two standards and one jumbo. You're not going to do than that, girl. You could be packing up and going home soon. And there's a crowd, don't we? So we can give it loads of variables. So you can give it loads. What are we supposed to say to get a, a crowd going? I don't know. Roll up, roll up, I suppose. You say roll up, roll up in a fairground, on a market. We've got to think of something. Yeah, give me one of them packs. Don't look at me like that. Stick one of these on. Right. Party time. You are shameless. I'm not shameless. I'm broke. <laughs> come on, come on, you lot. Look, we got a special offer on you today for anyone who's a granny or a granddad, or an uncle, or an auntie, or a mum and dad, anyone who's got any connection with kids, this is the store you want. In fact, anyone who was once a kid, this offer's open to you. Well, why? Why? That's what you're all asking. Because it's party time with Josie! Ah! Ah! Come on, then, get by him! Here you go. That's for you. I can't take this, mate. It's yours. Take it. I mean, you've got a new mortgage and all kinds. You can't afford this kind of money. It's not off me, you divvy. I'm just a courier. What do you do, eh, when you're not going to court or whatever? You're a taxi driver, aren't you? And you were told you were going to get a few, Bob. Not all this from a whip round, though, surely? No, not all of it. There's money there from the taxi driver's welfare fund, and on top of that is the whip round. All for me? Yeah. Well, no, not for you. For your court costs, you know. So you can win, so you don't lose your job. Penny dropped now. I just can't believe it, mate. Well, you better add, and just make sure you spend it on the right thing. Well, I'm not going to blow it on the horses or anything, am I? <laughs> well, if you did, you know what would happen, don't you? You'd have a load of mad taxi drivers at your door. Oh, not like me. I just get mad scallies knocking at my door. Hey, good morning. Does Mr. Terence Sullivan reside at this establishment? What do you want? I'll wipe my own feet, eh? Right? Ah, Mr. Johnson. And how's the world treating you? A bit better than I deserve, I suppose. Looks as if you're doing all right. 
Humble buckets of blues for the lady of the house. Oh, aye. Right. What are you after? Just a small token of my affection. Oh, behave. Um, no one's delivered a wooden suit for me, have they? The what? You know, a coffin. What do you bury people in? Oh, can you see one lying about? Oh, great. That means the party way of Plan B can now commence. What's Plan B? Plan B is a seriously refined version of Plan A. And uh, what's Plan A? Plan A is a seriously under the years version of Plan B. So, uh, what's part two A of Plan B then? Uh, take no notice of him. He's winding you up. You sure you want to know? Don't know. Well, if you don't want to know, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Why not? Because it's the kind of secret that you've got to take to your grave with you, Mick. Hey, behave, you two. I better be going, says. I've got to pick Joseph up from the market. I couldn't take him with you, could you? And sell him somewhere. Hey, Terry, go and get them flowers and water, will you? Oh, you're working for Interflora now? No, I'm working for myself, aren't I? Mind you, I am looking for idle hands. Idle hands in need of gainful employment. You mean gainful legal employment? Gainful, I said. In fact, uh, I've still got a temporary position ready for Friday nights, if you're interested, Mick. Were you after a driver? No, actually, I need a young lady to accompany me to a prestigious function. Of course, you will be supplied with spectacular outfits, which can be kept afterwards. No, I don't look good in dresses. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking more about your wife, really. Uh, there'd be no hanky-panky or nothing like that, you know, strictly business. No, she likes things off the wall a bit too much. It took me long enough getting her feet on the ground. It takes me all my time keeping them there. Look, all she's got to do is link me arm and wink at the right people. Another time, eh? I like having her on my arm. Hey, listen, Tess, I better be going. I'll put you down as a maybe then, eh, Mick? <laughs> oh, look, uh, pass the word on to the boys, will you? Tell them I'm made up about all that. All right, OK. All right, see ya. I'll see, see ya. Ya. Hey, I'm not running an agency here, you know. You might be. Well, I'll bet you the fiver that's where they end up getting one from. Never mind this weekend. There'll be plenty more favours due. Right, come on, you lot. We're going to have sold out here soon, and then you're going to be sorry. And if we don't sell out, I'm going to be sorry, cos I've got a miserable husband and 17 kids to support. Oh. That's right, yeah, 17 kids. Miserable Mick. <laughs> yeah, he's so miserable all the time he is. It's a good job somebody in our house knows how to get the kids to have a good time. And that's why we need party packs. Yeah. So we sold it for you, haven't we? If you've got six kids, you get six of everything, or 12, or 18, or 24. <laughs> oh, well done, Marcia. Here they are. Oh, look, poor Marcia. Look at her. She's an only child. Oh! She doesn't have much fun. That's the truth. <laughs> poor cow. <laughs> Can't afford to have much fun with the wages you pay me. But I've done this. She wants fortune as well as fame. Look at her hanging around with you, boy. <laughs> Hey, right. How much? No, yes, all right. We won't keep you hanging round you too long in the cold. How much? Look, yeah, keen. Well, miserable Marcia, she wanted me to sell these for three pounds and fifty pence. Oh, I said, right, people are made of money. Hey, Mick, remember him, miserable Mick, my husband? He wanted me to sell them for four pounds and fifty pence. I think people come to the market for a bargain, not to take out a mortgage. So listen, right. Tell you what, I'm gonna give them away for. You ready? Oh god, I've forgotten now, haven't it? Two pounds. <laughs> two pounds and thirty pence. Oh. Two pounds thirty oh, pence for the small one. ones. Oh, Great. And four pounds fifty for the next size up. And for everything you want to make a kiddies party really, really brilliant, eight pounds, and I'm giving it away. Now come on. What more do you want? Blood! Everything in there now except the cake. You can't. Well, that's what it's all about in there. Getting the kids to have a really good time. Hey, hey, because I'm in a good mood. Everybody who gets the economy size pack can get a kiss from miserable Marcia. Oh. All right? Hey, back! Can I walk? Because I'm in such a good mood. If you dig deeper and you buy the jumbo size, you can get away with that one. Oh. <laughs> all right, then come on. The big size. You want the big size? Yeah, great. The big size. Right. Oh, the big kiss to go with it. Oh, and the kiss. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> We're making some money here. Oh, All right. Oh, That's not oh, anymore now. Come on, Marcia, get working. So, what do you reckon? It looked better with a collar and tie. You know your problem, don't you, Sally? You're jealous. Jealous? Jealous of what? Of me suit? Hey, I've got good suits and all, you know. Yeah, but not like this one, Sally. I mean, this is the business. This gets Barry Grant into places he shouldn't be allowed. It gets me to shake hands with people that wouldn't have looked at us twice. I thought you'd just had it made. I have. Well, how do you know about all these things it's going to do for you, then? I just do, don't I? 
Walton Jail's full of people like you who think they can make easy money. Walton Jail's just full of losers, Terry, and that includes the warders as well. Hiya. All right. You're back early. Yeah, I've got some news. What? Well, it's a bit difficult. It's a bit personal. Hey, uh, don't mind me, you know. What? I've managed to get an appointment to see a consultant. When for? Friday after work. Well, that's a bit soon, isn't it? Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? I suppose so, yeah. Shall I make some tea? Yeah, go on. Tea all right for you? Hey, have you got any decaffeinated? Decaf tea? Yeah, if you've got any, you know, I'm uh, trying to clean out my system, you know, get rid of the toxins and that. If you want tea, you'll have typhoon like us. All right, then have uh, aqua mineral con gas. Fizzy bottled water, you mean? Yeah, if you've got any. I'll go and have a look. Look, I like Divi without a shirt on. Terry, I'm investing in heavily in this business, mate. I'm prepared to lose the shirt on me back. You lost me when Mick was here. Oh, no, do you fancy coming with us Friday? I mean, we don't have to link arms or not. You can pretend to be my chauffeur. Oh, cheers. Well, that's Sue, but I think she'd tear me down. Were you winding Mick up before or what? All I need is for someone to look the path for a really good wedge, cash in hand. And it doesn't involve waving guns around at people. Look, this one's that state. Even a monk could come in with me. I even asked Tracy. Did she blank you? Oh, well, she's going up with some busy, isn't she? One of Rod's mates. Well, couldn't you tell us what it is? No. It's up to you, Ter, but it's big money. And you're up to the eyes in debt, aren't you, mate? Way of life these days, isn't it? Not for me. Does it have to be this Friday? Sue, I think I will have that side for you, after all. I'll get back to you, Terry. Paula? It's me, yeah? Paula? Is he gone? Yeah. What if I didn't deserve flowers? They're off Barry. I had a feeling you were gonna say that. What was all that stuff about decaffeinated tea and clearing the toxins out of his system? You tell me. Makes me really nervous when he plays all those secrecy power games. Oh, he's all right. You just gotta listen to him and keep nodding, then he goes away. He always comes back, though, doesn't he? Yeah. If he's not careful, he'll come back in a box one day. So what are we expected to do in return for these flowers? Not only just said they were for you. You don't think he's softening us up ready to let us know he wants his loan back? No, we just come by his out and say it. You don't think he wants some kind of favour in return for these flowers? I doubt it. I hope not. There was supposed to be no strings attached to that money. Oh, there isn't. He just come round to show his new suit off and bring you some flowers. He hasn't always got ulterior motives, you know. They must have cost a fortune. Well, you know what he's like. He probably talked his way around the shop assistants and got a bit of discount. You gonna be all right for Friday, then? Yeah, fine. Just didn't expect it so soon, that's all. So it comes to going private, I suppose. It's not that time to get my head round it. Do you want to talk some more about it? No, if I feel the need, I'll lie on the couch and you can counsel me. We're both involved. Talking about it might do us both some good. You've told me your side. You said you'd love to have a kid by me. Well, you know where I stand. I'd love her to have a kid by me, so what's there to talk about? I don't know, just how you feel. Well, talking about it makes me think about it, and thinking about it gets me hopes up, and, well, all I can expect, really, on Friday is for this consultant to say to me, you want kids, Mr Sullivan? What do you think I am, a magician? Did you have a good day at work, dear? Nah. 
good. I'm glad. Oh, don't lean on it. Just hold it. I am. You're not ticklish, are you? Well, I don't you. Oh, stop it. You couldn't make him drop it now. What are you doing, you? I'm putting the roof on. You're taking long enough. Well, it keeps sagging, that's why. We can keep out of here one night if we make it strike. Oh, yeah, this time of year. Could stick you there the door so you'd stop all the draft. My arms are going dead here. Taking after your brain and earthy. And I've got an itch. Where? I'm not telling you. Could scratch it for you. Oh, yeah, you'd probably rip my leg off, Freddy Krueger Dixon. <laughs> That'll stand up to a tornado, that now. Right, let go. Are you sure? Yeah. Yes! The Jacko's dead! Last one into brush, man. Shed, will she? Of course not. What if she does? She'll get Max a surprise. Well, if she does, we just say we do nothing about it. But what if she blames us? How will she know? She just guess. She might be a woolly, but she's not thick. Well, we'll just tell the nails must have had metal fatigue. Yeah, she won't know the difference, will she? It won't hurt her or anything, will it? Of course not. The girls are done good then, eh? The girls are done real. The girls are done crap. The girl's done spot on, but next time the girl's gonna bring her own flask. They don't have to keep nipping or spending the profits in a tea bar. And this girl's gotta invest in a cheap pair of moon boots because the girl's got severe frostbite at the extremities. Well, and this girl's gonna invest in a full set of wall to wall thermals. Jumbo size. Hey, petite chic. Is this a nice quilted jacket on my Asian store? No. Said he'd make a couple of quid off of me being a trader and all. No! That's pretty nice, you know. Marcia, the girls are done good. Just get made a few bob, I mean, they have to go off and spend it before they even got home. You should be here next week. So will we if your mick doesn't roof and get here? Yeah, I'll be here. Do you think anyone will come back next week and complain? They better not do. They've had good value in them packs. If they do, you can be complaints department. Yeah, and I'll tell them to go to the customer relations. It also has production controller. It'll be customer relations as well. I'd be financial controller, then I can get that nice little jacket. I'll keep my eye on you. You'll be chief embezzler if I turn my back in five minutes. Oh, yeah. Transport manager's arrived. All right, girls. Hiya. Hey, you look. It's miserable, Mick. <laughs> what have I done now? <laughs> what is it with you two? You're branding your tail there or something. <laughs> it's miserable, Mick. <laughs> have you sold anything or what? Loads. And loads. And loads. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, come on, take us home. It's just a precious <laughs> got to us. Come on, <laughs> miserable Marcia. <yeah? laughs> <laughs> She's been in it already. It's still standing. It's gonna go. You'd think the wind off the brush would blow it over, wouldn't you? Well, we don't want it falling on down in here, do we? We want it falling on Mad Max. There we go. It's gonna go. Go ahead. Oh, I know. Right, troops, he's brief. Any casualties? No. Nope. Mission accomplished? No. OK, tell me what happened. It was his fault. No, it wasn't. It was. No, it wasn't. You must have left some nails in your corner holding it up. No, it didn't. Hang on. Hang on. This is a debrief, not World War Three. Tell me what happened. Nothing. The shed still stands. Correct. And is that a problem? No, because it's karma. It's case or ass or ah. If it'll happen, it'll happen. If it doesn't, it won't. That sounds dead philosophical, that. It's karma. One way or another, it's karma. My granddad told me. What are we going to do about the shed? We're going to get back in there and make that shed think it never walked this earth. What's karma? It's like fate, only it's foreign. Mr. Hennigan? You've got a cheek, haven't you? I wanted to see you. What about? Nice car, that. I'm not going to give you the quid to clean it, if that's what you're after. Me clean cars? It's for little kids, that. Oh, and you're the big grown-up man, I suppose, are you? Just like your old fella. That's what I wanted to see you about, just to, you know, say for he was out of order, he shouldn't have had a go at you. You're on private property there, you know, son. Sorry. Oh, you know what sorry means, do you? 
is Paul it in? I thought you'd come round to say sorry about the state you got into last week. I'd say sorry if I thought I was guilty or something, but it was nothing to do with me, you know that. Must have slipped my mind. Come on, why don't you believe me? I've told you, my dad's told you. I bet you Paul has told you no. Hey, what our Paula says to me in private is my business. All right, son, you've caused enough trouble round here without coming round on the snip. I haven't come round on the snip. In the middle of the afternoon, when you thought I'd be out at work. No, I never. Yeah, well, she's had a nan's, lad, so you've had a wasted journey. You just jump to conclusions. I never come round to see Paula. Oh, yeah. I want to see you. Listen, son, our Paula came home last week in a shameful state. And if you're the kind of company she's keeping, I can see why. I just wanted to say I've got two tickets for the concert. Oh, yeah, the Philharmonic, is it? It's for the farm, the brilliance. Oh, the farm, is it? Where all the pigs go, where all the animals live. And you want my daughter out mixing with animals, do you? Well, listen again. You might feel at home with animals, but our Paula's a nice girl, and she doesn't mess around with pigs. The farm's the name of the band. You're back on private property, you. D they're like gold dust, these tickets. Off. Well, if you want, you, you could pick her up and, and drop her off the door, and then when it's finished, you could bring her off. Home. Well, come on, I'm asking to take to an audio or something. It's only a concert. Hey, lad, I know you're a bit slow, but I didn't know you were deaf. I think you got the message. Our Paula is not interested. All right. You got her into trouble once, and once was enough. So now she doesn't want to know you. She wants you to stay away. She's like me. She thinks you're a no mark and a waster, and she's got better things to do in her life. All right. You missed a bit. Ah, get out of it, you. Miss me and all. And like I said last time, don't come back. An annual pheasant shoot filled with black tie suppers and school day traditions for Hugh next in TV dinners. Your granddad's, aren't you? You're going to your granddad Jack's. And you're going to keep him out the air house, aren't you? Because me and your mum are going to go see this mad professor. See if he can sort out some little brother or sister for you. <laughs> Come on, you're supposed to be giving me a hand with this. Yeah. You know, at least he deserves a card off. He doesn't see having to put up with you all the time, dribbling and snotty. Yeah. Come on, we've got to write on it. Happy Mother's Day, love Daniel. And then we're going either day. <laughs> Oh, oh hey. hey. Have you dirtied your nappy? Oh, hey, you should have left that for your granddad. Come on, let's go and change your bum. Come on. Come on, smelly. Oh, yeah? All right. Come on out to meet me now, do you? Did you want to come in? I'm easy, what are you doing? Well, I forgot I'm supposed to be going down to shops before my mum gets in. I'm supposed to be going out in a minute, though. 
Trying to get in the good books, are we? My dad hasn't got no good books this week. When he has me on my back, he's been going on about our family and our granddad she's gone off with. He's gone to Nottingham on some course of him. All I did was take a girl home. So he's been giving you a stick about you and Paula, has he? he hasn't shut up about it, calling me ale house and all kinds. Well, you will go around living the high life. I'm just seeing now in the uh, centre page spreads and the colour supplements. Are you going to walk down the shops or do I have to drag you by the tongue? The once promising young football star turns into booze ridden old ladies, man. But don't worry, mate, when you're on the telly making a total blaze out of yourself, I'll stand by you. It's when you find out who your real mates are. Oh, I know you're one of them, are you? The only one soft enough to be your mate, you mean? It's a bit smart in here, isn't it? I suppose he's got to keep appearances. See where the money goes. It's more like a bank manager's office than a doctor's. I think we're out of our league here, you know. We're probably wasting his time. He's a specialist. We're here for our benefit, not his. Benefits his pocket, you mean? We're here to benefit our family life. Oh, I know, I know. It's just I'm a bit nervous and in debt. Well, it's got to be worth seeing a specialist, even if it costs us. Anyway, whatever it costs, it's got to be worth it, if you can do something. If? I know it's a big if. I just don't want you building your hopes up, that's all. What about you? I never thought I'd see myself in a place like this. It is what you really want, though, isn't it? I don't know what I want anymore. I wish I didn't have to deal with this. I was lying in bed last night, no awake, thinking... When I was about 20, I used to play football. I'd go for a pint, have a laugh, and that was about it. My biggest worry was forgetting me football boots for an away match. Now you've got three millstones round your neck. The mortgage, the monster and me. I suppose I'm growing up now, aren't I? It takes time to realise that, you know. I see kids like young Jeff Rogers kicking a football around, and I don't feel any older than him. And then, well... Well, you know, like, things that happened with Danny and that, and... I feel a million years old. Listen, there. Uh, Look, I know I've said some things to you in the past year and that. Well, it's scares me when I think about it. You know what I said and what I wanted to do, but we're still together, aren't we? I mean, we're still here. We can come and sit in here and hold hands and that. I mean, we must have something going for us, mustn't we? Otherwise, well, I don't know. Otherwise, one of us would be dead by now. Look, if um, don't forget a bit tongue-tied and that, well, you'll step in for me, won't you? Of course I will. Because it's... Uh, it's taking a lot for me to come here, you know. Ah, right. Sorry about that. My wife locked herself out at home. I need to leave my keys for her to pick up. So we had a new conservatory built, and the door tends to blow shut when you least expect it. Right. Now, uh, Mr. Sullivan. Mrs. Sullivan. Stuart Coulter. How do you do? All right. Now, I'm sure you're anxious to get on with this, but if you could just uh, bear with me a minute, I'd like to tell you something. Well, it's up to you. We've come here ready to listen. Now, oh, I, uh, I don't want you to run out thinking it's time to change consultants, but I always try and say one or two very simple things first. Uh, <clears throat> infertility can be one of the most upsetting medical problems I know. You're telling me. A lot of people come through my door and, and they get confused and even more upset, because they think I'm God. Uh, they think I can solve all their problems if they just believe in me enough. And of course I'm not. I'm a doctor. This is my consulting room. It's not uh, the grotto at Lourdes where miracles are going to happen. Nor is it the Trevi Fountain in Rome, where you can just toss in a few million liras and all your wishes will come true. You've come to the wrong place, then. You don't work part-time at a travel agency, do you? I always try and make this clear to everyone I see in your position, OK? No miracles, no dreams come true. Just pure, simple medical science at work. You've got a problem in your tubes, I'm a mechanic in a white coat who might be able to sort you out. Couldn't be bought with pistons while I'm here, could you? you? Might be nearer to the truth than you think there. Now, your particular lack of fertility rather than your infertility. I've uh, had a look at your reports, but... Uh, I think it'd be better to. I'd like you to tell me everything you've done about it in the last year. And then I'll tell you what I think you should have done. Everything? Without going into what you normally have for breakfast, yes. Um. well, I don't know where to start, really. Um, well, we got married and then um, we... Uh... Well, I was pregnant when we got married. Terry wasn't the father. I didn't tell him. 
and she's still in one piece. Well, it'll be a little comfort to you, but uh, you're not the first couple I've known in that position. And you had this uh, first one all right. No problems at all on your side. Well, too easily, if anything. Daniel, he's called. Mm. Oh, very lucky to have someone who's uh, big enough and strong enough to stand by you. And Daniel? Well, it has been a bit of a struggle. We're still here, though. Excuse me. You don't know Jeff Rogers, do you? Uh, yeah, he lives next door but one to me. But you don't know if he's around. Well, I haven't seen him, but I've been to town shopping. Is this dodgy up? He doesn't know I'm coming, that's the problem. Well, do you want me to give him a message if I see him? No, it's all right. I've got somewhere else I can try. Thanks anyway. Bye. That's when I threw her out. And you never went back to your GP to talk this all through with him? Well, no, I mean, I was a bit, um, like... You was a bit upset at the time. Upset? I was ready to kill her. How often do you watch television? Oh, depends what's on. For the last 20 years on the television, we've seen heart transplants, limbs sewn back on bodies, all kinds of medical progression. What you've done is ignore all that. Because you were upset, you decided that in spite of all that medical progress, nobody but nobody would be working on different ways of helping people in your position. It's not the sort of thing you go around talking about, is it? You're, uh, you're a taxi driver, right? Now, if I want you to get me from A to B in the main roads plot, what do you do? I'll take you some other way. So what's the difference with the way you treat your ability to procreate? Oh, well, does that mean I have kids, does it? Terry. You've sat in a traffic jam for the last year. You've burnt up every bit of emotional fuel you had on board, and now you're knackered. You're still just sitting there. You've been banging your head against the steering wheel for a year and you suddenly thought, there might be a back way around. I'm a doctor. I know a lot of back ways around problems. That's what I'm trained for. That's what I'm paid for. I just thought if I couldn't have kids, well, I couldn't have kids. That's because you're not trained or paid to know otherwise. Ah, I know what you mean, I suppose. But do you want me to carry on after, you know, when I threw it out and that? Uh, yes, I'm sorry I interrupted. Don't lean on the tog, I just stole it. It's not gonna work, you know. It's looking really wobbly. Well, I'm nearly through. But he won't be back for another week. It'll have blown down by then. Right, let's go slowly. You've been away ages, haven't you? Do you mind I moved? No, do you haven't? These have told us. You might have done a runner because you couldn't keep up with the rent. <laughs> They're not rented, the bought. You'll have done a run out, just wait and see. Tony, Tony! What do you want, Kipper Bray? I am supposed to be on the me. Well, what do you want? I've forgotten the word. What word? The word I'm supposed to say when I've seen something. It's not a word today, it's three whistles, two short ones, and one. And one long gravy one. <whistles> All right, Togger. This is that a practice. There's someone in the house, it's the girl, Margaret. Why didn't you tell us, dummy? Go, 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 go! A boss, a boss, a boss! Soldier!
Anastas, these are all possibilities, not probabilities. What we could be facing is not simply you being infertile. What we could be talking is a sperm mobility situation. Try not to get too technical. You could have a, an infection or a blockage or some other treatable form of abnormality. I feel like I'm suffocating here. What is this um, blockage possibility? Well, Terry might have what we call a varicose seal, similar to a varicose vein in a very sensitive area. Basically, what it means is that there's some inflammation that's causing some pressure on the sperm duct or vas deferens. This produces heat. It's distinctly unhelpful when you're trying to produce an active, mobile, healthy sperm. The good news is that if it was a varicose seal, it could be treated. How would we find out? Well, my problem is I'd need a blood test, another sperm test, to try and isolate the nature of the problem. I can't suggest any treatment until the possibility of an abnormal function in the testicles becomes clearer. Do you uh, take a lot of hot baths? I feel like a cold shower at the moment. Yeah, he likes good soap, especially if he's been driving all day. Well, if we found there had been a varicose seal problem, we wouldn't be recommending too many hot baths for a while. A varicose seal acts a bit like too many hot baths. It raises the temperature in the testicles and this causes immobility of the sperm. But if it was a varicose seal, the good news would be that it can be treated. But um, does this mean an operation? Well, it would mean hacking about with a big knife if that's what's concerning you. It would mean microsurgery. We'd need to have you in overnight, open you up and do a full and proper investigation. And while we had you knocked out and opened up, we'd do a biopsy and x-ray your tubes, cover any other possibilities. You don't do a takeaway in medical dictionaries, do you? All you really need to know is that I might possibly be able to help you. Oh, well, that's what we wanted to hear. You don't know how much it would mean to us if we could have our baby. Well, even if we couldn't sort you out mechanically, we might look further into the possibility of in vitro fertilization. Of course, in that case, the baby wouldn't be conceived in the normal way. I don't know if you'd have any problems with that. Mm, no, I think we'd be prepared for that. Well, I'm just sorry you didn't feel able to come and talk to somebody about this nine months ago. Well, especially when you first found out there was a problem. Well, I wish we'd felt it was that simple. And you're not the first couple that uh, I've had to say this to. Oh, you spent the last year heating yourselves up with guilt and all sorts of emotional turmoils and upsets. And all that time, you've kept yourself in ignorance of any ways out. If I was a psychiatrist, I might suggest one of you is punishing the other. Some loss of trust, a betrayal of the love you've obviously got for each other. Yes, for the last year, I think your minds have been as blocked as your tubes. So, you've found a way to talk to each other and come and see me. Now, if you'll give me the chance, it's my turn to find out uh, what I can and then to see what I can do about it. Could you put these um, microsurgery options into plain English for us, just so we're clear on what it all entails? Plain English? From a doctor? From a Scot as well? Well, I'll try. What are you doing here? Never thought I'd find you. Never thought I'd see you tonight. Never thought I'd get here. Dennis didn't think he'd ever let you come, you see. He hasn't. He thinks I'm round with my mates. Two bucket of water, didn't he, you know? He was really not because he missed. Oh, it's too fast for him, you mean? I think he was a bit sorry afterwards. I think he thought he was a bit out of order. What do you mean he didn't me, yeah? Um, did Dad tell you to come down here then? Well, when he said he liked you off, he said something about you having tickets for the farm. Um, yeah, yeah, I did, yeah. So, I thought you might have been coming to see if I wanted to go. Well, I, I was, yeah. So here I am. I've come. So, Bruce's. Look really nice. Tar. Would you like to farm it? Of course, yeah. You'd have to be brain dead not to. I'm sure, your dad's not going to come down later looking for you. As long as I'm back by half eleven, he'll be all right. And sober. Great to farm, Artie. Tried to tell him you were looking after me the night I got legless, you know. Wouldn't he listen? I kept trying to tell him you were a nice lad. Well, I'm not nice, not, you know, nice. Yeah, but that's the way grown-up shoes, isn't it? You can just hear them talking to one of your aunties. Oh, Jeff's going out with a nice girl. Or you can hear mine. Oh, Paul is going out with a nice lad. I mean, 
You don't want to go out with someone who's nice. You want to go out with someone you can have a good time with, don't you? Of course, yeah. You always want your mates to be nice and all. They're not going to go around saying, oh, Jeff's going out with a drunken slag, are they? Come on, you're not a drunken slag. Even after last week? Of course not. That's what my dad called me. Yeah, no, not in do you? I won't tell you where he called you. Come on, what? <laughs> well, it wasn't a nice lad. There's a burger, do you? Well, why don't you come? Oh, what, one of my mates from school here. Uh, I owe him some money, a pound. I said I'd meet him on the phone here, so he's down for tonight. Would you want sauce on it? Oh, yeah, loads, and um, I'll, I'll mustard that. And get us a can as well, please, and um, just to do well done and that. There he is, my main man, man of the century, Jeffrey Rogers. Listen, are we going to have some time tonight? All right, only the understatement of the decade. This ticket has been preserved for posterity. I got home right, and it cleared a little space in my room. And I put the camera on time delay. And I put this on the windowsill like this, and then sat by it like that. Cares the rest of you well. There's loads of people asking me if I wanted to sell it, you know. I like gold. I said, look, do I look like a tout? I'm a genuine fan. There might be a bit of a problem with the ticket. It's not a forgery, is it? Well, no, not really, no. It's not invalid, is it? You know, not really. So what's the problem? Standing in the burger kid. What? Will, will, will Paul has come? Aye, aye, she's keen, isn't she? After last week and all. But you see, she's the problem with the ticket. Oh, no, no, no problem on that, mate. Look, I'll sort my ticket with yours, then you can sit next to her, can't you? I don't mind sitting on my own. Probably being next to some strange woman. Right, we having a burger or what? Sounds brilliant. Is it hot? Oh, well, at least you're having a good time. Is Thomas missing me? Oh, give him a night kiss from me. Uh, yeah, everything's fine here. Just the usual boring stuff, you know. No, I've not heard from him. No, not a word. Yeah, everything's fine. OK, then. All right. See you soon. Come on, let's swap tickets. She hasn't got a ticket. I was going to give her yours. What? Before I gave it to you, I... You want my ticket back? For a girl? I had forced to give it to her in the first place. But what happened to being mates? We are still mates, aren't we? Oh, yeah, great mates. Have a back then. Cheers, mate. Stuff your ticket. Did she get your money back then? Oh, yeah, you're dead funny, you, aren't you? She's got their autographs, you know. Yeah, yeah. The form? They were all just stood there getting a burger. I said to them, Mind you left you on stage in a minute. And they just said, Well, they can't start without us, can they? They also got my bag, look. And they said they'd do a dedication for me. Yeah. Paula and Jeff. So, uh, you think there's a chance, then? I don't think. I know. Must be a slim one, though, surely. Uh, do you do the football pools? Oh, why is it going to cost us a million? No, but uh, even when you've got massive odds against you winning a jackpot, you still have a go, don't you? I do the pools. Even though it's millions to one against me, I still expect to win the jackpot every week. The difference with coming to me is that you've probably got somewhere in the region of a 10 to 1 chance. So you're better off coming to me and possibly ending up with a baby than you are doing the pools and possibly ending up with a world cruise. Um, we haven't actually talked about money. How much might it all cost? Uh, between uh, 600 and 800 pounds. Unless we run into any particular problems, then, of course, extended treatment would cost a little more. We haven't got that kind of money. It's not cheap, I'm afraid, is it? Come on, we're wasting our time. Hang on, we might be able to find some way. Oh, don't be soft. We've got nowhere near that money. I told you we're wasting the man's time. Yeah, but we haven't finished talking about the options. Oh, we're in a fancy office here. He's talking fancy money. We're way out of our league. Yeah, but this session's already paid for. It doesn't have to be over with yet, does it? Of course not, no. Look, we might be able to find some way. Maybe we can get a loan or something. Oh, we're up to our neck in loans. I could have been working with Barry this week. I mean, I could have worked with him tonight. Would have earned some money, but... Well, that would only start to pay him off, wouldn't it? I'll tell you about that later. Look, we should finish talking it through. 
I know we haven't got the money at the moment, but we might be able to save up. There's uh, more than one option on the financial side of things. <laughs> Have a baby on the HP. Look, do, do you know what we're talking about here? I don't think anyone's got half an idea what we want. We want a kid where I'm the father and she's the mother. Because I love her more than my bank balance, my taxi, my house. I love her more than anything. And she loves me more than I deserve. I've abused her, I've upset her, I've frightened her. And she still comes in here and tells you that she loves me. Well, she must do, mustn't she? I mean, she at least deserves a kid, doesn't she? She's had to put up with my mood for the last year. She could have walked out on me, but she didn't. She hasn't stayed with me because of me money, because I've got none. We come in here with a little bit of hope, even if it is a million to one chance. And what happens? We have to stand here now and say, we can't afford because we've got no money. She deserves better than that. She's had to put up with enough, hasn't she? She shouldn't have to be told she's no good because we've got no money. It was us that decided to come private. It's not Mr Coulter's fault. Yeah, well, someone else will come in here, won't he? And they'll pay for the extension on his conservatory. Meanwhile, what do we do, eh? Sell the house, sell the furniture. Then we can have a kid and live in a cardboard box. My wife's a lawyer. She paid for the conservatory. I don't know what we're doing here. Come on, let's go. You came private for a consultation. You don't need to have the exploration or any subsequent operation done privately. I work both sides of the fence. I can get you done on the NHS. Oh, yeah, and I have to wait five years. Well, you could possibly be fortunate there. My waiting list isn't very long at the moment. Depends how soon you could come in for a blood test and a proper examination. We can start within the week if you can. I thought you said no miracles. You've had a tough year by the sound of it. I can make some recommendations and get you properly looked at and possibly even sorted out within a month. Well, I uh, wouldn't want you missing the jackpot just because you couldn't afford the state money. We'd like to try, please. A fundraising event has Marguerite Vincent cooking the very best of fare, including chicken terrine, homemade pesto, her very own great British raised pie, and desserts for every palate in TV dinners next. Doing that for me? Oh, the hard part's getting these pleats right. Well, I'll finish it for you if you like. I've still got loads of time. No, you're all right. The job's worth doing and all that. So, uh, were you busy last night? Nah, I was back in bed for half one. You were snoring. So, how are you feeling? Oh, all right. Might have another kip after. No, not about that. About last Friday, seeing the consultant getting these tests done. Well, how am I meant to feel? I don't know. I just thought now you've had the weekend to think about it. I've had the weekend working my backside off. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. Oh, whoops a daisy. Hey, uh, close your eyes there, will you? Why? There's nothing to see. Those might be interrupting something. Like what? I think you know what I mean. Where have you been, anyway? Um, well, Sunday night slowly that went on a bit too long, you know. Hey, you want to watch you and what you pick up, you know. Should not be better than that, Teddy. Anyway, yeah, uh, I'm going to go and get my head down. I'll see you about that favour after, all right? 
All right. Good night, Sue. What favour? Uh, don't know yet. So you're saying yes to favours you don't even know about? I haven't said yet to nothing. He's got you running around like a little errand boy. No, he hasn't. He's been mate. And anyway, he's done us a couple of grand's worth of favours recently, hasn't he? That doesn't mean you're at his beck and call. I'm not at his beck and call. <sighs> not much. Look, the more favours I do him, the quicker you can get him paid off, all right? Oh, don't talk soft. Open your eyes, will you? How much are you charging for favour? I don't know. Well, how many favours do you think he'll call in before he decides that we're out of the red? I don't know. Well, I do. Doing his favours might just about cover the interest on that money. Well, he's my mate, isn't he? He's a user and he's using you. Well, that's your opinion. Yeah, and I'm sticking to it. Are you off your head? I want to get this done now. I'm working after. There should be some kind of law about making this kind of noise this time of the morning. I'm putting this stupid picture up for you, aren't I? Well, it must be taking you all of ten minutes. And I paid for it. All right, you'll get your money back. Wouldn't mind if it was any good. My half fella wouldn't have anything like this in the house. Yeah, well, my dad doesn't have to look at it, does he? Because he's in Basingstoke. I do, though. Oh. Next picture I pay for, it's going to be one that I like. Oh, yeah. I'll be the crying boy and the house will burn down. Hey, I've got good taste, me. Absolutely marvellous. At least I can pay for my taste. Look, I'm having a few problems getting my business started. Yeah, you've been saying that for six months. Yeah, well, I'm just having a few cash flow problems. Well, I wouldn't mind seeing some of your cash flowing into this house, you know. It takes more than five minutes, you know, Rod. You're not kidding. Just you wait till I've been the blue rinse mob and you're coming to me for money. Seen that? What? Flying pig. Just you wait. I will, but in the meantime, Trace, we've got a mortgage to pay. When are we going to lodge you? Do you reckon, yeah? Well, it'd help pay a few bills, wouldn't it? Be a lot of trouble, though. I mean, I'd have to add them vetted and that, you know, because of my job. It was just an idea. Unless I already knew who was moving in. Like who? Well, I could ask Tomo. We'd be game on, you know. Oh, uh, no way. I'm not having this place turned into a police hostel. Oh, he's all right, Tom. Always a good laugh. No, I'm not having you taken over. Well, what would you rather have, a stranger? All right, well, if you're asking Tomo, then I'm going to ask Nicky. Oh, that's softer. Two lodges are better than one. You're just copying me, though. Rod, if the house has got four bedrooms, isn't it better to have four people living in it? I suppose so. And I'm not sticking Nicky in the extension, either. That Tom won't mind going in the garage. He's a fella, isn't he? Just think. We'll have two macho men to look after us. That's right, yeah. Oh, what are you doing? There's bird muck all over the windscreen. You're not using your fingernails, are you? Yeah. Well, I hope you wash your hands before you eat anything. Yeah, all right. Pigeons. I'm gonna buy an air rifle. Oh, charming. I'm sure they weren't aiming for your window. Well, I'll be aiming for their jacksies. Fell out of bed the wrong side this morning, did we? Maybe. Come on, come and have some breakfast then, eh? I'm not hungry. Oh, Frank Sulkin's not gonna do any good. I can't stop thinking about me daughter on a course with Old Man River. Frank, I don't like it much either, but what can we do? I know those two will be up to. Worrying about that won't do you any good at all. This trip to Derbyshire, Nottingham's not too far. I might just pop over there and surprise them. Don't you dare. Sammy would go mad. Find out what the score is. Frank, we know what the score is. Yeah, about five nil to five at time. Hey, up, Mum. I'm going to play for school. Oh, stay to me, mate, here. You that'll deal, Cage? No, I'm not just wanting to be in on time. You're going now. You'll be half an hour early. I'm not wrong with being early, is that? Depends why. Oh, reason. Anyway, I'm going. I check to make sure you're in on time. Mm. Love's young dream, eh? Yeah, I suppose I'll have to be checking behind the bike sheds now. Yeah, still at least this girl won't be hobbling around on a walking frame. Like Tim Flame and Zimmerman, will she? Promise me you won't start anything when you're over there. <sighs> I won't, but I don't like it. Frank, I'm as frustrated as you are. But I know what you're like. You get over there, you want to plant one on this fella, Tim, once you get going. Who, me? I wouldn't have to pension, eh?
Any of that going spare? It's going to be late, aren't you? It's all right. I've still got plenty of time. All right, you can have this. Great. Share and share alike, eh? Ta. Well, don't clam up on me, Terry. I'm not. I need to know what you're thinking. And you better get off in a minute. Forget about work. Just talk to me. What about? How some fella's going to mess about with me with a scalpel. Coulter told you on Friday that there'd be no blades. Microsurgery, he said. Same difference, isn't it? Is the idea of the operation all you're worried about? Isn't that enough? Barricade seals, <laughs> blocked tubes. Makes me sound like a vacuum cleaner. I know. But is it just that? I don't know. There's that much stuff going on in my head. I don't know where to start. You haven't changed your mind, have you? No, no. It's just the thought of being told you can have kids after all. Isn't that what you want? I know it sounds daft, but if we got told we couldn't have kids, at least my mind would be made up, wouldn't it? Well, last week you were full of the thought of having another baby. I still am. It's just frightening, that's all. Well, Terry, you've got to tell me what you're really thinking, though. I know. If you don't want to have another baby, our baby, then neither do I. That's the problem, though, isn't it? Danny, I love him like he's my own. He's more yours than anyone else's. But if you have a baby that's ours, from our bodies, I'm scared I love it more than him. Oh, look, you're too good a father for that, Terry. How do you know? How does anybody know that, eh? If this specialist turns around and says, right, go ahead, everything's back in working order, how am I going to feel, like? Eh? I don't know. Think about it. I'm going to be sitting there with my little girl in my arms, rocking her, and there's Danny in front of me. A walking reminds of everything that nearly went wrong. Who would you love more? I don't know. You won't, will you? Because they'll both be yours. I can't help that now. What if we have a bigger family, though? Danny's always going to be a stepbrother to them, isn't he? Yeah, but he won't know that, will he? One day he will. Yeah, when he's grown up and he understands. I've got a mate upstairs who's grown up. He doesn't know that Bobby Grant is his dad. How do you think he's going to feel if he finds out? Do you think he'll understand? Well, our son won't be a Barry, will he? Well, they've got enough in common, haven't they? Well, you've got to decide, Terry. It's got to be worth the risk. I can't, not yet. I need to know that you're 100% behind me. Let's just wait till after the test, eh? Come on. I'll take you to work, all right? All right. All right. Can I talk to you? You are doing, aren't you? On your own. See you in a minute, all right. You don't care what they think, do you? Well, I do, actually, yeah. Well, it's they my mates, and you're making a show of me. I came in early this morning to see you. Why? I felt like you. Come to school with my mates. Don't you know we're going out? Sort of. Uh, how do you mean? Nothing. She means still got a cop on. Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen him since he got off on Friday. If you'd have told me about the tickets, I wouldn't have come, you know. I wanted to see you, not him. You can't do the dirty on your mates. I'll make it up to him. I hope so. Good morning, young lovers. Nice. Never felt better. And how are the farm? Brilliant. That's what I like to hear. Remember, don't let me down. See you in class, Geoffrey. I'll take him upstairs, shall I? Uh, hi. <laughs> oh, home at last. We'd have the most brilliant time. Oh, good. I think it was a bit hot for the little fella, though. Did you get sunburn? Yeah, right down to his bits and pieces. Nude sunbathing for the under threes. Not recommended. Ah. Uh, well, worn out after all that travelling. Now then, pot of tea for three, eh? Yeah, I'll make it in a minute. Prezi what? time first. Ah. Uh. You shouldn't have Max didn't. He got you this. It's brilliant, thanks. You're very welcome. 
Tell her how you got it, Max. Bellevue Timeshare Sharks Incorporated. <laughs> yeah, he sat through a two-hour film presentation and brainwashing session to get that free of charge. It's simple. All you have to do is stonewall them, that's all. Some of that mob are like the Moonies. But... I got you this. I can't take this. Of course you can. It's one of my favourites. I'm sorry, I can't take your presents now after what's happened. Why? What's up? I brought one of your teapots. I know how fond you are of them, and I've been round loads of shops and markets trying to find one, and I'm really sorry I can't. Oh, I thought you were going to tell us you'd sold the house or something. <laughs> well, don't worry. I mean, we can claim it on the insurance. I mean, it's only a... It's only a teapot. Which teapot was it? The camel one. I know it was one of your favourites. Well, that Max says it's only a teapot. Oh, yeah, but that's not all. Why? I think you better come outside. Dixons. I know I've caused you loads of trouble. I'll just give up my job and go if that's what you want. Uh, no, that's the last thing we need. So stop worrying. Are you sure? Yeah, sure. I mean, we're not going to set you over a broken teapot, are we? No, but what about the shed? Well, even I can see there's more to this collapsing shed than meets the eye. Next door. Hmm. Time to clamp down on the clampets. <laughs> Yeah, I like it. Oh, nice, it's tough. You see, what was the nice? No, no, I was uh, trying to do a bit of training. That's what I like to hear. I wanted some weights off the get goes. I want to put a bit more beef on me for the end of the season. D Day, eh? Not long now. Stardom or the scrappy? Oh, thanks very much. Don't be soft, we all know you're going to make it. I hope so. Nice to see you rationing yourself, though. What? On the love life front. Then again, it is nice to concentrate all your efforts on affairs of the heart occasionally. How do you get on a boat? No. You, uh, you haven't said nothing about Friday yet. Well, what's this to say? I thought you'd still be mad, that's all. Well, why should I? You didn't look too happy when you got off, did you? That was before I got off. Well, I'm sorry, all right? Yeah, don't worry about it. I was fine once I got off. I just wanted to see Paul, that's all. So I'll make the money. What did you do then? I got off. Yeah, no, that, but, like, where did you go? The house. Are you joking? No, I went into town. Uh, on your own? Well, for a while, yeah, and then I got off. I got off home. Well, I got off to someone's home, yeah. Well, I got off with this girl. You messing? She was a student nurse. Oh, aye, yeah. They're always nurses, aren't they? What do you think I am? No, honest. Yeah, grab a dry night, was it? No, she's 18. A first year student. I told her I was 18 and all, and she swallowed it. Oh, aye, now you'd expect me to swallow that. Went back to her house. She lives on Smithdown. What colour eyes she got? Brown. Well, what's her name? Sarah. Sarah Hudson. And she's currently on the geriatric ward of Pazakali. All right, she asked how many fellow there, did she? I'm serious. Well, why isn't she living at the hospital? Because her and the mates moved out to this house about three months ago. And you went back there? Yeah, we had a pizza. Pizza? She's a cracker and all. Nah, I don't believe you. Best thing you ever did, blow me out of that gig like that, mate. Well, are you going to see her again? Well, I said I'd give it a call. You know how it is. Do I? I think we can handle our women fairly well. Can we? It's all yours, love. Thanks for nothing. Hi. Me and my shadow, or what? Well, uh, see you soon, anyway. I got loads of stick this morning off my mate about you. So what? Your mate still looks pleased about something. Yeah, yeah, he got off with someone on Friday nights. Where? Up in town, some nurse. Him and a nurse? Yeah, sound eh? Walk. What? Now walk. Why? Right. Well, my little brother's behind us with his mates. Where? Don't look you, Divvy. Oh, nice. oh God, if he sees us, he'll bribe me. Well, yeah, hang on, I can't win. Oh, no, you can pay him. Otherwise, he'll tell me Dad and we'll both be in trouble then. Oh, I'll see you later. Good. Looks good, doesn't it? Not bad. I'm going to have this place looking great. Will you, yeah? Yeah. Hey, will you run us down the shop? I've got a few things to get and there's no petrol in my car. 
All right. What time are you going? Well, my first job's at 12, so um, any time before then. So, uh, busy today then, yeah? Yeah, fully booked. Oh, so? Might see a bit of cash, yeah. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I've just spent the last hour and a half doing my books. Oh, go, is it, yeah? For some of us, yes. So, um, you busy tonight, then? Might be. Going out? Um, don't know. With Nicky? Nah, I'm not going out with Nicky. I see enough of it in the day. Oh. Who are you going out with, then? I didn't say I was going anywhere. It's that Mark Potter, isn't it? Lord, I'm not going out tonight. You saw him over the weekend, didn't you, Trace? Oh, so what, Sherlock? Nothing. Anyway, what's wrong with Mark? Nothing. If I was going out by Grant, you'd be screaming blue murder. It's another thing. Don't like the idea of him hanging round next door, either. Buying new dresses. Oh, get the posse to run him out of town. No, you want to stay clear of Barry Grant. I am doing, thank you very much. Anyway, I thought you'd be made up. Going out with one of your crowd now. Maybe it's a bit too close to home, isn't it? What? Well, you know, I'll be going to work and I'll be there. I'll be coming home and I'll be here. Don't like all my workmates knowing all my business. And you don't want me knowing what you get up to at work? I've got nothing to hide. I bet you haven't. Anyway, all I'm saying is you want to be careful if you're going to start some setup with with uh, Mark. You know what, Rod? You've got a cheek. Imagine me saying then about your precious Diana. Now, I nearly broke my neck on that tarmac before. Well, just with there being no faxes here when I got back. Well, if they can fix that road, they can fix that shed. So, I take it the place hasn't fallen apart in my absence? Otherwise, I'm going to fix them. Oh, good. Glad to hear it. OK, then. Right. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Just look at the size of this. Sorry? The telephone bill. £237, 31p. How much? That's Margaret ringing the outback while we're at work. Oh, no. God knows what it's been like when we've been on holiday. Anyway, here is the itemised bill. That's the proof. We'll see. Well? Hold on. Well, how many calls to hold them are there? Six. Oh, hang on, there's another seven. Well, totaling how much? Four. Five pounds. And the rest is us? Well, there's some you. And there's some... some me. Well, that's us, isn't it? Are you ready? I've had my coat on for half an hour. All right, I'm doing my best. Come on, I haven't got long. Look, I'm ready. You still got a cop on? Let's just go, away. Hey, listen, I'm sorry about before. I just don't want you getting mixed up in anything, that's all. Look, Mark's an all right fella, so what? Yeah, but I'm your brother, and there's only two of us now. Rod, no need to panic. I'm not going to be dragging him up the aisle tomorrow. I'm just after a bit of a laugh, that's all. Come on. Come on, Selly, give us a quote on a job to Ellen back. Oh, uh, you're going to laugh a minute, you, aren't you? Come on, wakey, wakey, you've got things to discuss. You seem to be doing all the discussing. All right, then, over to you. <sighs> hey. Look, Selly, give me your innermost thoughts about them shops they're building over there. What? Eh... Uh... Well, for a start, I don't like people traipsing up and down that path every five minutes next to the house. It's not too grand off the value of the house. And you never got any compensation, did you? No, nothing. Sweet F.A. Do you reckon it was ripped off there, or what? Well, Terence, I am no lawyer, but I would say so, yes. Yeah, it was that prat in the ponytail Smith, he sorted it. Smith? Sounds foreign name, now. Oh, he's the right divvy, you know. What's he to do with the shops, anyway? Ah, oh, he's running a show from some office on site. In a ponytail? No, I'm in an office. Well, what do you want to know for, anyway? Well, you've got to keep your ear to the ground, haven't you? You never know what might come up. It might come up with nothing for me. Um, don't you think that uh, you should be compensated for your lack of compensation? And how do you work that out? 
Well, um, this favour I was talking about. Oh, yeah, the one of many. Well, one good saying. Deserves a dozen others. Yeah, well, it depends on the size of the first one, doesn't it, sir? You try telling that to Sue. Ugh, I'll be with you a while. I don't suppose it's worth me asking if it's legit. It is. Well, what is it, then? I need a sidekick. What for? Someone to stand the yard behind me, to drive me round, to look the part. Oh, what part? This part. Grant Leisure? A development company based in Birmingham. Since when? A company through which I will promote my plan for a 100-acre sports and leisure complex in sunny witness. Your proposed plan for what? It's an important word, that's how he proposed. And um, where do I come in? Well, the chief executive of Grant Leisure needs a right-hand man. It sounds dodgy. It isn't. I don't know. I do. I need you, and you need the money. Sports centred in witness. Amongst other things, yeah. Grant Leisure. Who do you think you are, eh? Anyone I want to be, Terry. What is this? James Bond. No, it's Barry Grant, and I mean what I say. About what? Look, I'm sick of messing around doing little deals all the time. All right, I've got a few bob in my back pocket, but I want something else, sir. Well, weren't the warehouse parties enough for you? Oh, yeah, they were all right, but... This fella's into loads more than that, Eddie. And I've got big ideas. So why can't I do it, eh? Why not me? We join Hugh Fernie Whittingstall next with some of Britain's amateur cooks with something to celebrate in TV dinners next on Living. Baz, going for a stroll up our new footpad, have you? No, just been the shops. Yeah. You mean them shops you got nothing in them, yeah? <laughs> well, window shopping, you know. Yeah. How's business? Ah, yeah, not bad. Just doing my stock take, you know. Just be heading. Oh, I'll leave you to it then, eh, mate? Yeah. Hey, well, Baz, before you go, am I right in thinking you used to do a bit of shop fitting? Yeah, but it was many moons ago, that one. Who's been talking like? A fat little birdie told me. Oh, I thought my ears were burning. Sin bad, innit? See, the thing is, I'm moving into a permanent shop soon, and uh, I just wondered if I could put some work here, you know. Oh, no. Days are getting me hands dirty. You're well gone, Ron. Ah, fair enough, Baz. Just thought I'd ask, you know. Listen, um, I don't say I'm worked out, though. I might be able to fix something up. Oh, spot on. Where are the shops? You've probably just been looking at it. The new site? I wear the Oracle on a deal up there. Who we? Some beaut in a ponytail. Smith. Ah, yeah, that's him. Do you know him? Sort of, yeah. So what's the deal? I get fair shout on the choice units. Six months rent free. And all for not wrecking that nice little footpath. So, isn't it? Yeah, do me, I tell you. All right, Ronald, see you later. Mate. Yeah, see you, mate. Take it easy. What have you been doing now? I'm not, I'm Dad. Now, pass them down the lane and give them a lift. Dad, can we get a car like this? What have I told you about taking lifts off strange fellas? Especially when they've got to park up on the tarmac, that's a death trap. 
Back from holiday, are we? Yes, it looks that way. Oh, uh, thanks for the postcard. What? Oh, yeah, postcard. Right, once you three have given that the once over. Are you going to show us them puppies now, mister? Very funny. But now we are on our own, let's talk sheds. What sheds? Or rather, egg sheds and shed renovation. Shed what? Ren my shed is in my garden in pieces. Well, what's that got to do with us, Max? Everything, and you know it. No, we don't. Yeah, look, why don't you just admit it? You took that shed apart with screwdrivers and spanners. No, we did. We used the axles, actually. Now, I'm going to give you three about ten minutes to have a snack and a nice little drink, after which you're going to come back and put my shed back up. All right, Max. Or I'm going to ask your dad to check his hacksaw collection. Ten minutes, OK? Hard day at the office, dear. Where's Terry? Hasn't he been back? He might have. And what's that supposed to mean? Well, I don't know. Been out. Doesn't matter anyway. Good news, is it? Might be. About Terry and his little problem, is it? Will you give it a rest? Are they going to sort it out, are they? They want him in for tests the day after tomorrow. Oh, that is good news, isn't it? I think so. But does Terry? You couldn't be happy for someone even if you tried, could you? Well, I think there's got to be something to be happy about first, don't you? Well, I think the chance of a new baby is good enough for that. I'm thrilled. Who cares what you think? And there's me thinking you're hanging on to me every word. Some hope. Someone. Isn't that what you've been force feeding, Terry? Oh, no, sorry, that's false hope. Anyway, I'm going to shop soon. Ta da! This is going to take us ages. You never know, Max Farm it might give us a few bob. Oh, yeah, no chance. Doesn't matter. I've got a surprise for when we finish. What is it? Shut it, you. Benna, where did you get them? Look them off me now. Yes, I can do with a ciggy. Why didn't you get something I like, Benno? I like these. Well, I don't, OK. I'll have this. Shut it, you. No skiving there, lads. Just get the sides matched up. I'll do all the hammering in later. Can we have a go of one day back together? You three let loose with a bag of nails and a hammer? God forbid. Do you know how much we get for the proper job, Max? Now, look, I haven't said I won't pay you. Fact. Hang on, though, a sec. Yeah, he's gone away, I see. How much do you reckon we'll get? There you go, lads. Cash in hand, in advance. What sort of money is this, Max? Pesetas, all the way from Tenerife. But we can't spend that. There's also lads like you. You'll find a way. Tony! Oh, you're not going to snitch on us, are you, Max? I might do. Tony! Over here. Uh, shouldn't you be on this side of the fence? No, the kids are very kindly helping me put my shed back up. Oh, didn't know it was down. I don't think I got it right the first time round. You're in demand today, aren't you? Your bedroom's a show, and you're tidying it up for a change. Yeah, Mum, but I'm helping Max with the shed. You can help tomorrow. Come and do it now. Well, they really are doing me a very big favour here. I wish they'd do me a few favours. The house is like a pigsty. I really would appreciate their help. Um, it'd take me ages to do it by myself. Look, I'm sorry, but I want him to do it now. Bedroom, Tony. Well, surely you could wait an hour. Tony, will you just come over here now? Oh, Mum! Aye, aye, what's all this shouting in aid of? Well, I want Tony to tidy up his bedroom, but Max seems to think he should be fixing his shed. You what? Hey, get over here now, you. Thanks for nothing. You've got something to say, have you, pal? What if I have? It didn't take long for you to start giving your orders out again, did it? Well, the kids were more than willing to help me out. Oh, great. Why don't you get them to weed your garden for your first? That's not looking too grand, either. Probably come out in sympathy with the tarmac out front. Oh, don't start. 
I mean, I had half hoped you'd get it seen to whilst we were away. Hey, he's been running a mobile shop while you've been away sunning yourself. Well, I work hard too, you know. That's why I can afford to go off sunning myself. Hey, don't you go talking to her like that. Like what? You and that poxy suntan are getting on my wick, do you know that? I'm not keen on joining your fan club either. You're asking for a smack, you, you know. See, look, see? I'm trembling. Now go on, fix the road. Will you stop moaning about that tarmac? You're like an old woman, you. I'm sick of it. You're sick of it? I'm sick of you. Your kids, your tarmac, and the glorified junkyard you call a home. Who the hell do you think you are? A decent human being. You're not a human being. You're just a mouth in a suit. And this mouth says, fix the road or I'll see you in court. I'll see you in hospital. Fix the road. I fixed it, haven't I? That bot's joke. You'd be better off putting those three on the job. Or would I? Right. I'll put it back to its former glory, then. Back five minutes and she can't stand the pace. Alex, I knew there was something I should have stayed on holiday for. I was looking for you earlier. Do you sleep in? I've been working with a client all day. I just came back to check my mail. Catch up on the gossip. Oh, I leave that to the fishwives. Seen these? And storyboards for the toxic waste campaign. The very same. All going rather smoothly as well. Full steam ahead, in fact. Well, you'll have to debrief me on the last three weeks. So are we still coming at it from the same angle? Worry not. Paul will probably have a word. Paul? Paul Cunningham? That's him. <laughs> this is Richard's campaign. Ah, but as of last week, we were rendered dickless. Patricia, good holiday? Fine, thanks. Must press on. See you later. Fantastic turn. Have you got a moment? Sure. Let's talk toxic waste. Well, Alex just has. He tells me Richard's off the campaign. <laughs> well, that's one way of putting it. Was there a rush job on or something? No, it's much more drastic than that, I'm afraid. He's not ill. He's been poached. London Agency. So you're now looking at the new skipper of HMS Toxic Waste. And he's gone, just like that. As Tommy Cooper was prone to say. So then, where are we with the campaign? It's roaring along. Plenty to catch up on, then. Well, plenty of work, at least. At least? Yeah. You set the toxic waste ball rolling for us, and that's great. But it's a team game, as you know, and well, we feel somebody else should be in possession as we head for goal. I'm sorry, Paul, but beyond Gaza crying into his soccer shirt, I'm really not much of a soccer fan. We feel there's been an almost imperceptible shift of direction in your absence, that's all. I've been dropped. No, not dropped. More of a tactical substitution. Come in number seven, your time is up. Still, plenty more matches to be won or lost. I've got a campaign I'll tell you about on Monday. Right up your bowling alley. Something you can really get your teeth into. Ciao for now. See, lad, careful, you haven't got your hard hat on today. You know what these roadworks are like, you could get hurt. Frank, just doing a bit of DIY. DIY what? DIY, while like, I get your own back on that no mark in there. I dig the road up. I tell you, he's been giving me earache from day one about this tarmac. 
I got it fixed, like, didn't I? But it wasn't good enough for his standards. So I'm putting it back the way it was. He can do what he likes about it. You sure about this, mate? It's either the road or his head. I tell you. You've put yourself through a lot of trouble there, aren't you? I'm just sick and tired of the sound of his voice. You're not doing yourself any favours, are you? Favours? I got it fixed in the first place, so I do everyone a favour. Yeah, but it's not exactly a conventional bit of road working, was it? I suppose not. Still doesn't give him the rights to give me down the banks, though. Yeah, he probably just wants to, you know, a, a flat bit of road, you know. I mean, we've all got to live in the same street, haven't we? I wasn't thinking about anybody else, just him. It's a bit of a mess, like, isn't it? be so bad if it was just a tarmac he goes on about. But he's giving me stick about all my gear as well. Yeah, he probably just likes the place tidy. I mean, a lot of people do, don't they? Well, it's not that bad, is it? Well, I don't think so, no, but, uh, it's not exactly spick and span, is it? Oh, don't you start, mate. Oh, listen, Ron, I'm on your side of the fence, you know. I'm, I'm just saying, like... All right, maybe I did lose me back a bit. But I tell you what, I am up to here with that smart so-and-so. Listen, don't let him get to you. It already has, mate. Listen, anyway, while I'm here, can you do me a couple of tins of corned beef? I want some mash for me tea. Aye, all right, come on. No problem. The trouble with these short runs is you can't park up anywhere and have a decent scan. Yeah, I know what you mean. Don't worry, mate. I'll sort you out. Where are they? I can't see any here, Frank. Oh, it doesn't matter, huh? No, 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 it's OK. I've got some must be in the house. Can't have you starving to death. <laughs> Something been in there? I don't know. What? Get out here, the three... What? Oh, it's not working, Dad. Oh, no, I suppose you've been practising your smoke signals in there, have you? I haven't had one, Dad. Oh, was... yeah, defo. And he said in the paper it was non-smoking day and all. Honest, Where'd you get these from, anyway? I don't feel well. Good. Eh, uh, I'll call back later on. When the fire's going Yeah, out. all right, Frank. I'll drop them over to you. Right, you two, get off home now and tell your old fellas what you've been doing because I'm going to be ringing them later on. I'm going to be sick. Get your mate upstairs before he sprays my shoes. And you, smoking Joe Frazier, can get that lot cleared up out there to keep Moan and Ollie's happy next door. And when your brother comes home, tell him to shift that heap of a car and that wreck of a bike, otherwise they're going for scrap in the morning. Away, oh, hey, Dad! Never mind, oh, hey, Dad. I've had enough with them other two and that druggy without you starting. And while you're at it, I'll go and buy you 40 ciggies and you can sit in tonight and smoke the lot one by one. All right? Well, I don't know. I mean, Dad's doing it. He'll probably be calm, be fast. He's got a craze for it. That'll do me. Hey, you want to watch your weight? I don't want Sarah going off yet. Well, no, she doesn't just look at the outside. She's more interested in the person within. How oh, are you? Put on three and a half stone and ask her about the person within. She said I had a nice build anyway. Well, when did we get to meet her then? I had to check our diaries. Do you want to go out with me and Paula? What, in a foursome way? Well, why not? I don't know, you know, I've only just got another girl myself. Oh, are you ashamed of us because we're only 16, are you? Don't be soft. Well, do you want to go to pictures then? Anything good on? Ah, but if it's an 18, she's going to be the only one allowed in, isn't she? It's not my fault that uh, older women lust after me, is it? Next week? Yeah, all right. There was Terry. He'll be back in an hour. Ridiculous, you know. What is your puking? Do you think you'll ever run out of smart answers? I doubt it. Why? Because I have. I've got nothing clever left to say. Oh. I can't live in this kind of atmosphere. Waiting for the next dig. Terry's your best mate. Doesn't that give us some kind of mutual ground? 
I don't know. It's hard enough just coping with me and Terry at the moment without you. What's hard about it? Oh, a million and one things, but you wouldn't be interested in any of them. But I should understand, shouldn't I? It's like I'm... I'm Terry's best mate. Yeah, but... Well, look, if you don't talk about it, how are we gonna find some mutual ground, eh? Whatever you think, the bottom line is that I love Terry and I love my baby. And as far as I'm concerned, Terry is Danny's dad. But I know that for him to be really happy again, we need to have our own kid. I know it might just be a matter of biology to some people. But I know it mean the world to him. You can see that, can't you? I think that'll be for me. No. Tastes nicer than chicken fly lie. I should think so and all. Hey, you know what? I think you and our lad must be the only two busies in Liverpool that haven't got muzzy. <laughs> When's your lad in, anyway? I don't know, I'm not his mother. It's a good job, really. Hey, my mother's nice looking. Do you miss not having her around? Yeah, sometimes. When you, I can't always phone her. It must be great having this place all to yourself, though. Yeah, when I have a bit of peace and quiet, <laughs> it is. Well, there can't be many girls your age have got the run of a house like this. I suppose not. How about another kiss? Oh, a boat. You go and do the dishes so we can go for that bevy. Yeah, I was worrying about that. What, the dishes? No, the drink. I mean, I fancy a couple, but I'm going to end up over the limit, aren't I? Oh, then you wouldn't be able to drive your car home, would you? Uh, see, I can't risk it. I'll lose my job if I get nicked. So you'd be stuck, then? Yeah. What do you reckon I should do? Oh, I've got an idea. All right, what's that, then? I'll, um, just phone you a taxi. <laughs> oh, what a brilliant idea. How come I didn't think of that? Oh, well, you probably had something else on your mind. Yeah, like whether I'll see you again this week. Well, um, that depends on my appointments. Clients come before coppers. I have made an appointment for a demi wave. I'll well, we'll see what I can do. <laughs> I could always grow a muzzy, then you could trim it for me. No, thanks. I don't like kissing rats. You're the boss. Yeah, I know. Right then, wash it up and then the alehouse. Seeing as I'm getting a cab home. <laughs> when we sat there with the consultant and Terry poured his heart out, I could see how strongly he felt. And I felt responsible for it, all over again. And I don't want to feel like that. It's not my fault that Terry mightn't be able to father kids. And I had to sit there while the consultant sympathised with his every word and looked down on me like it was all my fault. Like he was doing me a big favour by letting me even be in the same room as them. Do you see what it's like for me now? If I was Terry and the operation was a success, I wouldn't even waste a sperm on you. What? See, if I was Terry, you'd be a corpse now. You're not fit to be a mother. You don't deserve Terry. 
Je don't deserve Danny. It's you who should be sterilized. Oh, shit, your mouth. <laughs> truth there, does it? You know nothing about the truth. I feel sorry for that kid. No real mother. No real father. Oh, not like you, Barry, eh? No. Not like me. My kid will never have the love like I got off me ma. <laughs> Said he'll never have a wife like me dad had. You bastard. <laughs> Sticks and stones. No. You really are a bastard. Well, just to prove I'm not. If Terry does fail the test, I'll give you one. <laughs> After all, I am his best mate. I'll never get that desperate. I like our little chats, Sue. Just get out. A gentleman's luncheon club in Hampden House in Buckinghamshire is the rather fancy destination for Hugh Next in TV dinners. This might only be a pasty, but it tastes like caviar. I know, I'm starving. I'm knackered. What a morning, I. Huh? I've not been looking forward to this dinner hour. Dinner half hour, you mean? Are you, Tracy? I'm not messing. God, you're a right little slave driver, you aren't you? Yeah, someone's got to be all. You'd sit here all day. <laughs> yes, sir. Anyway, I'd rather be knackered and working than sitting here waiting for the phone to ring. You can have too much of a good thing, you know. No, you can't. <laughs> Oh, I well had enough this morning, you know. A few baddies were there. Ooh, one woman at house stunk. <laughs> Mrs. Moss's head. <laughs> yeah, that's right, do you know her? I did a last month. So what are you doing sending me there? Because money's money and I'm the boss. Well, thanks very much, boss. Eee, I reckon she painted the walls with cheese or something and I was stunk. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I have to do with them. I'm fed up with doing pensioners. I know. What really gets on my nerves is, right, they give you conversations and they put steady milk in your tea. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Not exactly high class, are we? I know, yeah. Oh, just imagine if we had our own salon. What are you doing? I'm just imagining, cos that's all we can do. I oh, know. It'd be brilliant, that. It'd be brilliant to have the money. Just think how much it'd be to get the place fitted out. Pay the rent, then the bills, and then pay for all the gear. All right, I only said. Yeah, well, it's bad enough, isn't it? This place to look after. Oh, well, looks like we're stuck with the crumblies, then. The cheese and onion pasties. <laughs> <laughs> sure you don't want one? No, I'm all right, thanks. It's not an operation, you know. You haven't got a nil of a mad sign round your neck. I know, but it's best to keep your system clean, isn't it, when you're going for these tests? OK. You didn't have to take time off work, you know. Of course I did. Showed my face for a couple of hours. They didn't mind. You didn't tell them the score, did you? Of course not. What do you think I am? Just tell them you're going down the hossie, that's all. Oh, sorry. Just that I'm a bit nervous. Well, you're going to be all right. 
It'd probably take me all day to give them a sample. I'll give you a hand if you like. I don't think that's allowed, is it? Look, come here, sit down. You're only going for tests today. No commitment, no obligation. Just find out where we stand. But it's all down to me, though, isn't it? No, no, I'll make must feel going to court. It's like going in front of a judge and jury. How does the defendant plead? Fertile or infertile? But no one's judging you. Just giving us a chance. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll have something to eat, eh? OK. Morning. Afternoon. I thought you were supposed to be only Aussie, sir. Not yet. All right. Well, I hope it's the right result for you, Terry. All right, mate? Yeah, I'll bet you do. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Nothing to worry about. Oh, hi, hi, here comes your ex. Hi, yeah, come in. All right, Chase. All right, Nicky. All right, Barry. Um, any chance of borrowing your iron for five months? What's wrong with next doors? Well, eh, uh, Sherry and Sue are having a bit of a heart at heart, aren't they? And if I think I'll stay any longer, like, I'm gonna end up in Sears. It's in the kitchen, help yourself. Sir. Stacey, I'm in a suit. He's stepping up in the wheel, Barry. I might be. Fancy giving us a leg up, then? Hee. Is that a leg up or over? So what do you think of this beautician idea, then? What manicure isn't that? Yeah, well, you know more about it than I do. I know you're probably have to have a practice on my mum because it's like ages since I did that course. Well, I was thinking we could um, offer them an all in one, you know, um, face, hair, nails, the lot. I know, but she's reckon the old ones will go for that. Why not? Talking shop, are we, girls? Let's just get back to your ironing. We've got to get off soon. Anyway, we can't all swan around in suits driving jeeps. One day, Trace, when we've got our own salon. It's all business booming then, is it? Take Hey, she's a millionaire in the making. Yeah, defo. Mind you, no one got rich by shampoo setting pensioners all alive, did they? Getting sick of the Derby and Joan then now, are we? I've got no choice. You might have. How'd you make that out? Well, I might be able to put a bit of work your way, mightn't I? Yeah, your head could do with a trim. Look, I know all kinds of fellas with money, right? And they give it to the wives, get their hair done, get new clothes and all. I could put a word in for you. And what's in it for you? Look, we're mates, aren't we? Is that right? Say, see, if I can't help my own stepsister out, who can I help? Yeah, and someone's got to take the money, so it might as well be us. Oh, I don't know. See how it goes. So, are you moving in higher circles now, Barry? Well, I've got to, haven't I, Nick? Hey, you two should go into business together. You're a good match. Two tycoons together. Nicky? Now, well, Cece's already met her perfect match, hasn't she? PC Potter. Tracy's going green here. How is Mark, anyway? What's it to you? Well, I'm just interested in the romantic welfare of our boys in blue. Well, he's all right. Tell you loads of funny stories about forensics and that, does he? Well, even if he did, I wouldn't tell you. I wouldn't want to know. Well, that's all right then, isn't it? Just finish this off and then we'll go away. Oh, we've still got loads of time. Should have got Barry to give us a lift. Rather get a cab. Is he still next door? Look, Terry, let's get a cab. We won't mind. He just added to the four thousand pounds we already owe him. Oh, he's not that bad. I think he is. Look, we've got enough on our plates. Couldn't you two just try and get on, eh? Don't think I can anymore. Well, why not? It's just too much. Well, couldn't you try for me? I have tried for you. I've tried not to say anything for the last two days because you've had all this on your mind. Well, say anything about what? Me and Barry, we had this terrible argument. What? Last Wednesday night when you were out in the Jeep. Well, what about? Oh, I don't know. You, money, the favours he wants you to do, the lot came out. Well, what did he say to you? Nothing I couldn't handle. <sighs> not when you haven't already heard from me, you mean? I suppose not. Did he say anything about these tests? They got a mention. Oh, and what did he say? Well... He seemed to think if the operation was a success, then you'd be better off finding another mother for your kids. Well, that just shows you how much he knows then, doesn't it? Maybe he's right. Yeah, and maybe he's wrong. He's just jealous, you know, that's all. Don't think I can handle many more bust-ups like that again, though. 
If he says anything again to you, you tell me, all right? OK. But I'm scared. I was that far from cracking and telling me about Sheila. Oh, wait, what have you said to him? Well, nothing he could make sense of. But I sat there and I could see the hate in his eyes. And I just wanted to laugh in his face and tell him that he doesn't even know who his own father is. I don't care how much you detest him. You can't do that to him. I know, I don't want to. But I get the feeling that every extra day he's living here is another day closer to me blurting it all out. Well, that'd just destroy him, wouldn't it? The atmosphere here is destroying me. I've only got so much patience. All right, I'll talk to him, OK? And he wasn't your best mate. He's not. You are. Thanks. But we still owe him and he's still here. Not forever. Come on, let's go away. So, are we sorted then or what? You, as usual, are sorted, Mr Dixon. But you are also rapidly running out of credit. This site isn't being run for your sole benefit, you know. Smear the eye, I know that, mate. I wasn't being greedy. I just needed the favour. Well, if you can possibly help it, make this the last. We'll see, eh? If you see the fellow over there, he'll sort it out. Sound. Hello, right, buddy. Mr Dixon. Right, I'll go and see that fellow then. Uh, bye, Mr Grant. See you, Smithy. Not if I see you first, Mr. Dixon. That man's not so much a pain as a terminal illness. Hey, Mr. Smith. I presume. And you are? Barry Grant. Grant Leisure. Grant Leisure? Doesn't ring any bells, should it? Well, I hope so. It might save your company thousands of pounds by the end of the week. <laughs> Is that right? I think so. Are you a double glazing salesman, Mr. Grant? <laughs> Very funny, Mr. Smith. If you'd just like to have a look at these, see what you think of the punchline. I'm a busy man, Mr. Grant. And so am I. I won't rush you, though. I'll be back at five o'clock. See you then, Mr. Smith. Of it all over? Yeah. End of part 12. Pancake. Superb. <laughs> hey, Smithy will sort you out back on the site, all right? He owes me a favour. Yeah, the road. The road? Fixed, repaired to your exact requirements. Yes, so I see. Well, come on, then, inspect it. Check if it's all right. No, I can see quite well from here, thanks. I thought you were in the building game. I am. Well, come on, then, and fetch your spirit level and watch that little bubble land right in the middle. I have neither the time nor the inclination. Hey, come on, Maxie, you moan long enough about this. Yes, with good reason. Oh, play the game, eh? I don't think waiting four months for a decent road is any sort of game. Hey, I went to a lot of trouble getting them fellas here today, you know. Yes, well, if your navvies had turned up four months ago, I might be a bit more sympathetic. Are you still not happy? Well, it's not a question of happiness, is it? But I don't know. You do your best. I thought you'd have been made up to see that road back to normal. What do you want me to do, a tap dance? Thanks would be enough. Thanks? Yeah, thanks. That road's as good as new now. Why did it need fixing in the first place? That's not the point. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Look, I've cleaned up and everything. Yeah, except for that bucket of rust. Now, well, our mate's going to sort that out after, isn't he? Right now, he's revising for his exams. Not without you begrudging an education as well. Yes, all right. Well, just make sure he does, OK? Now, look, I've got some work to do. I'm preparing for my new job. Hmm. All right. Actually, I've got to get off myself. Got to pick some stuff up. Yes, well, that's all right, then. I wish we could have gone back to yours. I told you I haven't got my key, have I? All right. Mum and Dad are both at work. Yeah, your mum works here, remember? And Sammy's with Uncle Tim. 
So it's chips off fresco then, eh? Well, fuck, Casey's in when I get home. Why, she's not going out with some six-year-old fella as well, is she? See, that's been murder and arse since Sam got off with that Al Crumbly. You see, what people don't understand, it's not the age gap that matters, it's love. Try telling that to me, Al, fella. So where is your key, anyway? It's in the other coast. Thanks to Paula. Oh, I Throwing it over a puddle for her, were you? No, it was just cold, so allegedly. What a gent. Be lucky if you get that back. Oh, well, I'm half a season, he'll probably set fire to it all. Still got his angry head on, has he? You're joking, aren't you? Yorkshire Ripper's got more chance of getting in that house than I have. Dads and daughters, eh? If it's head, innit? Wouldn't mind if it done something wrong. He's could do with more salt and vinegar on you now. I don't think Paul is going to be able to get out tonight either. Why not? Well, her dad works shifts and he's working late tonight. Her mum works in a pub Friday and Saturday, so she's got to mind a little brother. And what about our foursome? Well, it doesn't matter. You meet Sarah and the three of us will go. <laughs> well, if she was green in the area, would you? Yeah. Oh. Well, why, she's going to feel like a right goose be sitting there all night while we talk about football. Don't, don't be silly. It'd be me, it'd be the goose, but you'd be smooch. Well, that's going to be even worse, isn't it? What are we gonna do then? Knock it on the head till next week. I'll ring Sarah to tell I'll see you tomorrow. Won't you be knocked though? Mature women don't get knocked, they take things in the stride. Really? Yeah, and anyway, traditionally, Saturday night's a couple's night. Friday night's for going out with the boys. So we're still going out? Oh, too right. We can bail over to Tram here for a match. Oh, nice one, yeah. We keep trying ale outs afterwards. It's one by ours that save you the nappies if you had the money. Yeah, but um, what about this foursome? Well, I don't think Sarah's working next Friday, so uh, how about that? Yeah, yeah, I'll check with Paula. We can have a laugh tonight. We can practice for when we're married and we have to sneak out the house to the pub. Oh, I enlighten one another's wives. That's what friends are for. Oh, I, yeah. You said your son was going to get rid of that car. He is. Doesn't sound like it to me. Why is that then? Well, since you've been gone, he's been tearing up and down the close like Alan Frost on speed. Mm. Can't go up for five minutes, can you? What is it with your family and roads? All right, Max, he's going to shift it. Haven't you heard of noise pollution? I'm hearing it now from your gob, aren't I? Well, just get it sorted out. Hey, soft lad, Pope Maximilian wants you off the road. So come on, get that thing shifted back here now. Are you satisfied? Mm -hmm. I'm in push it, not drive it. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Why me? What are you playing at? Sorry, Barry lad. You what? Look, it wasn't my fault. I could have gone through the windscreen there. Look, Barry, the axle went. Alright, boys, all right, lads, calm down. There's no way I'm done. You what? All right, aren't you, Buzz? Tramps. You're the one doing the A levels. How do we get this thing shifted now? All the problems with Barry were nearly over then. Why? Well, what's up? Did you see that there, Terry? He got to kill me. I should have given him a smack. Oh, where would that have got you? I don't want it to get me anywhere, do I? I just want to inflict a bit of pain. Since when have you needed your fists for that? A oh, hard day at the Aussie, was he? I survived. How did Sesco? Came and it went. Oh, so did you. How oh, funny. Um, so what did he say? Nothing. Just be patient, that's all. Hey, Sue, uh, lens the echo a minute, will you? Soon he gives the echo. The sooner I can get off. We've got things to do, you know. Only to look at the property. Dun, dun, dun. Right. See you later. See ya. 
He really do hate him, don't you? Oh, and he's madly in love with me, isn't he? Well, the more favours I do for him, then, the quicker you can get rid of him. Anyway, let's not talk about him now. How are you feeling? All right. I'm tested a bit brutal. It's like one big bring a bottle party, eh? <laughs> I just felt like another mug in a queue. All we can do now is wait. A postman Pat to tell us if we can have kids or not. To tell us what chance we've got. Soft, isn't it? I was waiting for the results of tests once before. Only they took my kid away from me. And now I'm waiting again. It's always up to someone else, isn't it? Looking down a microscope. Always out of my hands. Always waiting. State of that thing. Bet that's there for ages. Oh, God, I need me bed. Someone's gonna crash into that, you know. Hey, come on, you. We've got tomorrow's bookings to do, yeah. Don't you ever stop? Wish I could afford to. Who's your post off? And my dad and Sheila. Oh, how is Sunny Basing Stoke? He reckons it's all right. Said there's loads of work. It's bound to be there, isn't it? Then maybe we should pack up our moose and get off there. Nah, I like it here too much. I know, yeah. All this freedom. Yeah. Um, you don't need a lodger, do you? Actually, that mightn't be as daft as it sounds. Really? Well, it is great having the house and that. I know, yeah. To do what you like, innit? I know. And uh, having a fella to move in and out when you want him to. He hasn't stayed at anything. Oh, yeah. Not even the other night when you asked him back for Horlicks. No, because I sent him home in a taxi. Uh, didn't he mind? Didn't have any choice. Fair cop, was it? Funny. I've got a business to run. I don't want some fella taking root. But I thought you liked him. It's all right, but what's that got to do with it? If I let him stay once, I'll just never get rid of him. Hmm. Oh, well. I suppose you'll just have to wait till he invites you back to his house then, won't you? I suppose I will, will I? <laughs> Mr Grant. Mr Smith. I expected you earlier. Did you? I was wondering, Barry, are you familiar with the conventions of the tendering process? Well, what do you think, Jed? And despite this, you just stroll along and put in an offer for the shop fitting contract on this site without even so much as a phone call or a letter. Well, I'm interested in hard cash, not bits of paper. Maybe so, but we've received sealed bids for this work. Yeah, I know you have. From Sedgley's, from Hewitson's. OK, I get the picture. But those bids were meant to have been made in the strictest confidence. Well, it's confidential and it's confidential, isn't it? And what's to stop me confidentially slinging your bid into the dustbin? Cos you don't look thick enough, that's why. Why shouldn't I? I've been doing a bit of homework. I found out that you've boxed Ron Dixon off with a nice little deal. I was fully authorised to do so. Not exactly legal, though, was it? It was perfectly legal. And Mr Ted and Sullivan, who lives next door, he never got anything. Let's just say that Mr Dixon was a better haggler. We'll say I told Mr Sullivan. He might turn into Marvin Hagler, mightn't he? I hope you're not threatening me. No. I'm just saying you've got funny ways of doing business, that's all. Meaning what? Meaning that you're open to all kinds of offers, whether they're conventional or not. We have to be flexible. Oh, is that what they call it? Listen, why don't you do us both a favour and get on the phone to whoever's running this operation and tell them what my tender is? Maybe you'd like to tell me how you can undercut your competitors by so much. First. Oh, well, that's dead easy. Subcontracting. I mean, these shops, ready-made walking units, aren't they? Fellas I know would do them in the sleep. And I'm not just going to undercut these firms. I'm going to come in way under budget. Which means there's going to be a nice little lump sum left at the end to divide up to whoever's helped out, if you know what I mean. You seem very confident of my cooperation. Well, you like me, aren't you? You like money. And the easier, the better. And how do I know you won't rip me off? Cos I need the money from this deal to rip somebody else off, don't I? And when would I see my helping out fee? Get the tender through. Get me some upfront money for the goods on site. 
And we'll talk about your cut. I can't guarantee your front money. They pay in stages. I need up front money. And so I suppose that means you do as well. I'll have to make some calls. Be my guest. I'll go out to the car, if that's OK. Fine by me. Five minutes. celebrate the birth of her child, Rosie throws a very unusual party with over 20 eclectic dishes, including the placenta, in TV dinners next.